Hey, welcome to the Publish, Promote, Profit podcast with me, Rob Kosberg. Every week, I interview thought leaders and experts who have used the book to grow their income and their impact. So tune in weekly for these interviews so you can learn how to use your own best-selling book and go from hunting for clients and opportunities to instead being the hunted. All right, welcome everybody. Rob here with the Publish, Promote, Profit podcast. Excited to be with you. I have a great author and thought leader in the space of health and wellness, Mr. Udo Erasmus. Let me tell you a little bit about him because you're going to love the things that we talk about today and I think really enjoy a man of his caliber being able to share his thoughts. So uh, Udo is a, a pioneer of health and wellness, the entire industry, having created flax oil and the healthy fats movement, which... Very, very interesting, and I think we're going to talk a little bit about that. He's the co-founder of Udo's Choice, which is a supplement brand, a global leader in cutting-edge health products, having sold tens of millions of bottles of healthy oils, probiotics, as well as digestive enzymes. Uh, Accomplished author, of course. Your book, Fats That Heal, Fats That Kill, sold over a quarter million copies and still selling. I noticed on Amazon, it was still uh, towards the top of the bestseller list, which is fantastic. And uh, obviously, uh, extensive background, master's degree in counseling. You've impacted millions of lives, thousands of presentations, thousands of media interviews. And uh, thank you, my friend, for being on with us today on the Publish Pro Profit Podcast. Thank you for being an amplifier with the message that hopefully will turn out to be a good one. (laughs) You know, as I have aged, I'm now 56 and uh, I pay uh, more attention than ever to my health and, and fitness. I work out every day. I try to really take care of the healthy fats that I'm eating and, and diet and all of that. And so I'm, I'm really interested, you know, this, the flax oil, this healthy fats movement, it's not like that's new. And yet it seems like to me that it is still continuing to gain momentum. Is that what you're seeing in it as well? Or do you feel like, you know, we've kind of moved on from that? Well, we're always moving on from things if we're driven by fads. Mm. We're not going to move on to things that are true once they've been established as true if they're essential. That's good. Right? Because you know, you have to have iron in your in your diet somehow. Right. You have to have omega 3s and omega 6s. You have to have magnesium. These are essential nutrients. Right. These are not fats. You know, it took a, a, you know, at at one point they were discovered. But once they're discovered and it's established that these are things that you're going to need for the next million years, mm. they move out of the fad territory. Right. There are things in fads where somebody gets a nice marketing angle and they like coral calcium. Coral calcium is about the worst kind of calcium there is, the least okay. effective. Calcium, of course, is an essential nutrient, but it became a huge thing. And they did infomercials and they sold, what was it? They sold $500 million worth of it. They made all kinds of claims for it that weren't true. So that's a fad. And then after three years or so, or five years, I can't remember exactly how long, they got busted by the FDA and the, you know, the, the guys who... Pay attention to that kind of stuff. The guys that take and, you to jail for doing that. Yeah, kind of and stuff. then they they got fined fifty million dollars, but they made five hundred in the meantime. You know that was a fad, and then it was over, right? Yeah. And then one year it was melatonin was a fad, and then glucosamine sulfate was a fad, and then the the blood type diet, which was quite a bit of BS in that, that was a fad, and every year or two there's another weight loss fad. Yeah. So there are things that are essential that last, and there are things that are fads that are flashes in the pan right. and that are replaced every year or two. So I like to work on the stuff that is true and basic and often the most basic things we need to know about health get forgotten in the chase for the fad and the money that can be made on fads short term. That's a a great statement. I want to explore that for just a minute. What do you yeah. think are some of the biggest things that have forgotten in this chase for money and in this this chase for success in the supplement industry? Well, I noticed that when I got involved in it, I wasn't in the industry. I came in from outside because I got poisoned by pesticides and I was looking for self-help and because the doctors didn't have anything for it. And I got stuck on fats because fats were misrepresented, misunderstood, confusing, contradictory. And I wanted to make 
sense of it. And mm. once I realized that most of what we blamed on fats should have been blamed on the damage done by processing or by food use, because mm. these are sensitive and they're damaged by light, oxygen, and heat, and we throw them in the frying pan. Right. And they're damaged by light, oxygen, heat all at the same time. And they increase inflammation and cancer, as well as do proteins and starches when you overheat them. Yeah. And so I was saying, and I realized they're the most sensitive nutrients, need the most care, we give them the least care, and more health problems come from damaged oils than any other part of nutrition. Hmm. And I was like, oh my God, if we could make them with health in mind and bring them back made with health in mind, so they retain their health benefits, we could help so many people. Hmm. And then omega-3s were established as essential, which means you can't make them. You've got to have them. You've got to bring them in from outside. If you don't get enough, you go down. Your health deteriorates. You get deficiency symptoms that are degenerative in nature. They get worse with time. And if you don't get enough long enough, you die. This is like hmm. really important stuff for body construction. Yeah. And if while you're going down, you bring enough back into the diet that's too low in it, then all of the problems that come from not getting enough are reversed and you get your health back because life knows how to make a body work, provided you take responsibility for providing, for bringing in what the in. essential building blocks and making sure they land in the body so life can use them. Yeah. Right? yeah. yeah. So, and that stuff gets lost because people think, oh yeah, well, we know all of that stuff. And then they get fancier and fancier, you know, and then they say, oh, well, we want to have, you know, we have this thing that called omphalomesenteric vein inflammation. I just made that up, right? Oh, I was <laughs> and so like, let's make that one's so new let's, to me. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. So I made up that word out of something that exists in biology. You say, okay, let's make a product that has a whole bunch of esoteric things in it, and then we'll throw that at this problem. And in doing that more and more, taking very specific things and making products supposedly to help, sometimes mm. with scant research evidence. In the process of doing that, because people want to carve out niches for themselves, they lose track of what everybody needs that actually has the biggest market. Right. And so I came in on the essential part of the fats because that was really, no one was, was really dealing with the issues. Right. But the same thing is true for other minerals and vitamins and amino acids. And I decided that what I wanted to do is I wanted to build a foundation. What is the stuff that everybody needs, whether they're healthy or sick, to maintain body construction? Right. And, and there's not let's one Let's put thing. that together yeah. before we got, get to all of the, the smaller, because if we get that in place, make sure the foundation is there, then let's see if we got any problems left yeah. that we need to address with something further. So that's the way I, I was, that's the way I looked at it. And, and I still think Very often, good. it's kind of like in the city, you know, the city, you know, you, you build a city and it's a little town and then it builds and builds and builds, you know, and as it gets bigger and bigger, you know, all the people who can afford it live in the suburbs, live in the suburbs, live in the suburbs. And in the end, the core of the, the city is where all the homeless people end up. Mm. Why? Because, you know, you, you got more and more into the periphery of the city and you forgot the heart of it. And because you forgot the heart of it, it deteriorated because things do deteriorate when they don't get attention. Right. 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 So, and the same a tree, you know, the, the bark on the outside, you know, under the bark is the, the live part. Yeah. And then the tree gets bigger and bigger and then it begins to rot out from the middle. So you end up with a hollow tree still alive, right? But the middle is rotten and it's not useful for anything. Right. Interesting. Right. So you know, in I, a way I, we do that, we tend to do that with pretty much on every topic. We get more into the periphery and more into the symptoms and more into the specifics and more into the details you know, and finer and finer details. And pretty soon people have, have forgotten that there's only a few things you need to know at the core of your existence. And from that, you can figure everything out pretty much. Right. I like to hang out to the core. Yeah. Very good. And I do that in other arenas that have to do with human nature and health as well. I don't think you're going to like this question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Okay. <laughs> just, just, we'll see. I, I know that well, you know, there's an interesting thing, right? There's no question that there's no secret missing ingredient that the foundation has to do with all kinds of things, as you just said, vitamins, minerals, amino acids, healthy fats, et cetera. Yeah. But from your research and knowing the 
average American population and what has happened to the average American, what would you say are maybe the biggest missing ingredients or the one biggest? Not that that's the only thing. I know there are many, but what would you say do you see more often that, boy, this one always seems to be a problem in people? And this is the question that I wasn't going to like. Yeah. Oh, it's I, a was, I wasn't sure if you wanted to say that it was six things. I want to know no. one thing. No, no, it's perfect. It's perfect. When I finished with oils, which I said is the most neglected area in my assessment of when I learned about it. Yeah. Second one is digestion. And guess what? Digestion happens in your middle. So we're back to the core. Yeah. That's been forgotten. And in that arena, digestive enzymes, probiotics, and fiber are the three main and maybe bitters are the four main things that you can do to make digestion work. Why? Because when we started cooking foods, we killed the probiotics that were on the foods in nature, the way they grew in nature. That's where cows get them from. They get them from every blade of grass in their mouth and through the system. When we cook our food, we kill those. Mm. So they should be replaced, but most people don't replace them. And then digestive enzymes in raw foods, because nature's mandate was fresh, whole, raw, organic, and for humans, mostly plant-based. That was nature's mandate. Mm. So we cook our foods. We destroy the enzymes in the raw foods that do about 60% of the digestion of the food for you once you've chewed them up and it's sitting in the top part of your stomach waiting to go into the acid bath. So those two need to be replaced. Interesting. Fiber comes from plants. So the more we've gone to more more animal-rich diets, the less fiber we get. Fiber is really important for the probiotics, the friendly bacteria. Mm -hmm. So there's a third one that you need to pay attention. It's good for bowel regularity and stool consistency and all of that kind of stuff. And everybody has problems with their digestive system. Either they're burping or they got gas or they got, you know, bloating or they have stomach pain or they, their breath smells really bad because there's a lot going on there, right? Mm Because you're turning living things into poop. Right. Yeah. And in the process, it's going to it's get hit with acid and hit with alkali and hit with enzymes. And there's bacteria messing, messing around in there. So that because there's so much going on there needs to be done properly and properly is always in line with nature. Hmm. And we get out of line with nature. And then the more we get out of line, every step we take out of line, we get some problems eventually. You, you know, said if we some, cook uh, the food, if we cook the food and don't replace the enzymes, our digestive system is forced to do more than twice as much work than it was intended for. Hmm. Well, you think that wouldn't catch up with you in, in five or 10 or 20 years? Of course, it would catch up with you. So that would be the next one. Gotcha. You know, you've said some interesting things that lead me down a certain path when it comes to thinking about how we should be eating. In this day and age, there's so much talk around keto, the keto diet. Paleo is obviously very similar. Probably they have their foundations in the Atkins diet going way back, probably as far as the 80s Mm -hmm. or 90s. Those often don't seem to be very fiber-rich diets. Any opinion on those diets and, you know, the likelihood of those producing the kind of health that people want? Yeah. Well, paleo doesn't have a definition, doesn't really have a definition. So just about anybody can call anything paleo. Okay. All right. Well, that's fair. You know, all you say is, well, that's how people used to eat. But none of the people who you claim used to eat like that are alive and you can't, so you can't prove it. (laughs) Right. You can't prove it. Right. So that's convenient. Right. Now, I'm not saying that they're doing that on purpose, lying to you on purpose. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying it's, it's convenient and you can't actually find out because it depends if you were a native in North America living on the prairies. You ate a fair amount of meat because you had herds of buffalo. Sure. And they were relatively easy to catch because the herds were so big and there were cliffs and there were ways to do that. But in most places where there weren't that plethora of animals, mostly people ate plants most of the time because plants are really easy to hunt down and kill and they don't run away and they don't fight back. (laughs) Right? So if you only had had rocks to hunt with, you probably ate a lot of vegetables. Right. Right. Well, so, talk about keto yeah, then, and then because keto. keto we can define. Yeah, keto is defined as you basically dump the carbs and you eat more fats. 
Yes. And there's very strong camps on bo- both sides. You know, the beans and chickpeas and, and lentils and peas guys and grains guys, you know, they say carbs are the most important food, but they have to be whole food plant-based, whole food plant-based. So we're not talking margarine and sugar here. Right. Right. Because that's, that's plant-based, but it's right. junk. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And the yeah. other guys are saying, no, you want to dump the carbs and you want to make fat your fuel. The problem with keto is that if you don't make sure that in your diet, you get the omega-3 and omega-6 fats undamaged as your first fat priority, the keto diet is not sustainable. And most people like to use butter and coconut and medium chain triglycerides because they're very stable. They're not sensitive to damage by light, oxygen, and heat. And most people don't want to take the care of perishables. And omega-3 and 6 are perishables. Right. They're like lettuce. you got to give them care. Most yeah. people don't want to do that. So most keto diets don't pay enough attention to them. Hmm. And then the more other fats you eat, the more of the essential fats you need because they compete in certain ways. Gotcha. Uh, it works for weight loss. Part of the weight loss is water, You know, the body dumping water because- Uh, You get inflammation from eating carbs, a little bit, just a little bit of water retention. But the omega-3s actually actively turn on fat burning in the body and actively turn on fat production. And if you make sure that your keto diet is based on omega-3 and 6 in the right ratio made with health in mind, and then you eat tons of vegetables, because that's basically the best diet. You get energy from the fats. There are higher energy molecules then you can do quite well long-term on a keto diet. So so there's a good keto diet and there are lots of not well done keto diets. Yeah. Me personally, I go both ways. I switch them around. I do, generally speaking, I do better on keto based with lots of vegetables. So I don't, I don't have bread or cookies or sugar or uh, noodles in my house when I'm here by myself right now. I have my daughter and her son living with me. When I'm by myself, I don't have any of that stuff in my house. Right. I occasionally go out for some. I'm not fanatic that way, but I pay attention to it. And I, you have to, because so much is available to us, we actually have to eat deliberately with forethought about what we actually need because our lifestyle has changed. We're not as physically active. We have so much stuff available to us. The options. We even have to deliberately fast or do a autophagy diet where you eat for eight hours and then don't eat for 16 hours so that your digestive system gets some rest too. Yes. Right. Interesting. I I was going to ask you about intermittent fasting and the thoughts on that. But before I do, I have something on my mind because it's something I've been doing for years and I just love it. I I always struggled eating breakfast. For whatever reason, it didn't sit well in my stomach. I Mm -hmm. ate it only because I was told it was the best and most important meal of the day and blah, blah, blah. And I discovered a bulletproof coffee probably yeah. six, yeah. seven years ago. And so yeah. I swear by it personally. Yeah. You know, I have grass fed butter. I use the, you know, the, they call it brain octane. That's the bulletproof brand, but it's yeah. MCT oil. I wonder I if you have a, an opinion or a thought on that. Yeah. I, I think the only way to improve it would be to put essential fatty acids in it instead of saturated fats. Interesting. And how would you and do that? You just pour oil on it. So you put, do the same uh, thing you do with the butter or, or the MCTs. Yeah. You know, you put the coffee, you dump the stuff on it, it floats on top. You go to get a little whiz and whiz yeah. it in. Yeah. So you can do that with the oil. The omega threes and sixes also float on top. You just whiz them in the same way. Yeah, you just neutral bullet them in. Yeah. Yeah. And you get better results from that because omega threes actively turn on fat burning. The coffee gives you a little bit of extra push. Yeah. But the fact that omega-3s will actively turn on fat burning makes it a more effective fat burning diet. I call omega-3s the fat burning fire starter. Wow. Because they do I, that. I want that. But saturated fats don't do that. They don't turn actively turn on fat burning. Omega-3s so what, when you do. say you just put the oil in there, yeah. be specific. Like what, what do you mean? Are you talking about you know a really high grade extra virgin olive oil? Like no, what, no, what no, do you, no, no, no. You, there's no omega threes in olive oil. Okay, no. so what kind of oil would we put? What I put in that because I'm going to try it right away. Udo's oil. Udo's oil. I'm going to buy Udo's it right oil. away then. Udo's awesome. oil. That's the go-to. That's the Cadillac or the Lexus or the 
Tesla <laughs> of, nice. of the fats arena. The two essential fatty acids are the only thing you have to have from fat. And they need to be made with health in mind, and they need to be made with care because they're so sensitive. And gotcha. you put them in food after it comes off the heat. You do not use them for frying. And they enhance flavors, and they improve the absorption of oil-soluble nutrients. That's fantastic. And, and, and so, how, much, how much would I put in in a bulletproof coffee in a situation like a couple of tablespoons? or yeah, the, the same as what you do with the MCTs. You put a okay. tablespoon in, put a tablespoon in. The amount per day we I recommend is a tablespoon per 50 pounds of body weight per day. Okay. Mixed in your foods. Yeah. And intake spread out over the course of the day. That's the way they work best. Excellent. So you, you look like you, I don't know how tall you are, but you look like you weigh maybe 160 pounds. Yeah, 170. 170. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good I'm, call though. Yeah. <laughs> not bad enough for just seeing your head. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm psychic. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. <laughs> so you would, you'd be like a three tablespoon, three and a half tablespoon per day. And then you put some of it in the coffee, you know, you, whatever, whatever you just spread it out. Then when gonna, you do that, I am going to try that immediately. You want to get it. You want to get enough to make your skin soft and velvety. Okay. If you were a really high metabolizer, you might not be able to do that, but you're not. I can tell that just from looking at you. The high oh, metabolizers. That, that's sad. Are, that makes me sad. <laughs> no, no. The high metabolizers are people who are really skinny no matter what they eat. Oh, that's not me. <laughs> no, I, I know that. <laughs> and I'm not either. But they might need something on the outside for their skin. That's only about 5% of the population. Interesting. But the best way to oil your skin is from within. And you need both essential fatty acids to make that barrier properly. And then your skin becomes soft and velvety. Biggest thing people say about the oil that I work with yeah. is fantastic what it did to my skin. But they okay. also improves mood, elevates mood, lifts depression. The body makes endocannabinoids out of omega-3s and protein in the body itself. Interesting. So you get, you get high on the food. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong and, with that? Uh, <laughs> and super important for pregnancy with athletes, 40 to 60% increase in performance if they do their sport to exhaustion within 30 days of starting on a tablespoon per 50 pounds of body weight per day, which is about 25% of calories from the So oil. Udo, tell me when it comes to, you know, going to see your doctor and, you know, heart health, and I, I assume you know, the bad fats are bad because of cholesterol, the bad cholesterol, et cetera. Is that where the, no, no, no. so explain the difference no. between the healthy omega-3s and omega-6s versus the unhealthy and how that portrays itself in a doctor's appointment or in health problems. Well, well that question I don't like. <laughs> well, I knew no, we'd eventually get to one you didn't like. <laughs> yeah. No, because the reason is because doctors are not trained in nutrition. Okay. So whatever yeah. the advice yeah, gonna... they give you about nutrition is not medical advice. Yeah. And it's advice they stole from somebody else, probably yeah. from some hippie in the 60s. <laughs> you know, because I, I totally the agree. Hippies, so, the hippies so, started that. So rephrase uh, the last part of the question. So, Forget so the So here's the thing. If you want to be healthy, yes. don't go to your doctor. <laughs> because the doctor says you're healthy when you're not sick which means you have, don't have any symptoms. Right. Even if the symptoms have been suppressed by a drug that has major side effects, sure. they would have then called you apparently healthy. Yeah. If you want health, go to nature. If you want symptom management, crisis management. Go to a um, doctor. Yeah, symptom suppression. And you want to have somebody monitor your downhill journey into the graveyard, <laughs> go to the doctor, right? <laughs> Health comes You're... from nature. Life <laughs> invented health in nature. Love and, it. and that's because your body is made out of light, solar energy. That's your life. Oxygen, water, and foods that contain all the 45 essential nutrients. That's all right. your body has ever been made from. Right. There's no such thing as a pharmaceutical drug deficiency. There never will be. <laughs> right? And nature I... was able to do that, but we have to live in line with nature. And we always, we think we're smarter than nature. And then we say, do better living through chemistry. We used to, that's what it was called when I was a kid, right? Yeah. Better living through chemistry. And look <laughs> at the mess. Look at the mess. No. The ocean no. is so dirty now. Fish is the dirtiest meat on the planet now. Uh, so everything goes downhill. Pesticides and 
pharmaceutical drugs have side effects because they're toxic. <laughs> That's what side effects are, right? Toxic yeah. effects of unnatural molecules. Yeah. And because they didn't exist in nature, life never made a life never made a way to break them down yeah. easily. And not life was not able to take them and use them in health. And that's why they have side effects. They don't belong right. in the body. I, uh, you know? And then to, the, what I is agree. the excuse? Well, people don't want to make, take the time to look after their own, their own health. Also, we're going to throw symptom suppression at them, but nothing gets fixed. It's like, who came up with that? 200,000 years of stupid. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> right? there's a lot of money behind it, unfortunately. Which, whatever uh, it is, whatever it is. I mean, I, yeah. I don't even want to go there. But yeah. the thing is, if you want to be healthy, you need to live in line with nature and your nature. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Well, you hated the question and you answered it. In your no, no, no. It was, <laughs> I don't hate the question. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm having a good time here. <laughs> Tell me this, something that's been on my mind. I've, I've read so many studies on longevity. And, uh, you know, as, as you get older, you, you think about that kind of thing. You know, recently I've, I've read more and more about, you know, perhaps our generation or even the, the generation after us, perhaps, because of the science of longevity and the understanding of longevity, may be the first generation, the one after us, that lives to 150 healthy years, et cetera. Do you have any thoughts or opinion on, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure you've done many, much research and study on well, that. What, what's your thought yeah. on that? Okay. So the best chance to live healthy and as long as possible is to live in line with nature and your nature. Why? Because that's where you come from. That's what you're made of. That's the stuff that yeah. gives you your lifespan. But there are kids that have a genetic mutation or a genetic form of a particular gene. Their maximum lifestyle is two, lifestyle is, lifespan is two years. Mm. And maybe by living more in line with nature, you can make that three years but they're never going to live 120. And there are people who say, oh yeah, 120, that should be normal. Not for everybody. There are limits that are built into your genetic program. Interesting. However, there's also something in your nature that has no limit because it has no form. It's called life. It never dies. And consciousness or awareness, no form, lives forever. Your body, because it has form, will one day lose its form. And the pipe dream of oh my God, we're going to find out how to live forever. And there's been people saying that for a long time. Uh, probably in the 13th century, they were always BSing you <laughs> for that, right? So the fact that it is form means it will lose its form one day, no matter how well you do it. And the question of living forever is a question that is asked or that is pushed to people and maybe by people who are afraid of dying because they haven't actually spent enough time spending time in the space their body occupies to get connected to what is indestructible and eternal and deathless nice. and never get sick. That is part of every human being's nature. So we're, we're talking now soul and spirit. We're not, of course. Yeah. Of course, because that's also part of you. Sure. You know, and if you get into, I can run through it really quickly. Please. The core is internal awareness. I call it internal awareness. In that core is, your, is a perfect peace that you can experience that is real, that isn't absence of war, but is presence of a presence. And that is the foundation. That's your source. That's what you come out of. And that's what the entire universe comes out of. And when you can bring your awareness to that place, when you bring your focus to that place, you look around and say, oh, my God, peace has always been everywhere in this universe. Always. Yeah. Always. And if you don't see it, it means you haven't gone deep enough because only peace can recognize peace. Okay? So that's the deepest. If you don't have a, that as your foundation, then you're living your life without foundation. Mm -hmm. And imagine if you have a life where peace is not the foundation, then there's always something going on, and there's sure. always stress, and there's always change. And there's always reactions instead of proactions, right? Yes. Oh, I talk about the great deal, reaction versus proaction. Love that. Yeah. Second part is life energy, which happens to be solar energy. So the sun's energy goes into green leaves, excites electrons. They then 
react with other atoms to form bonds, to form molecules. The solar energy is stored in those bonds. Those become your food you eat, the food you break them down, the sunlight, the sun, solar energy is released, and you, that is your life. Now, I'm talking about science now. So we look at, we see light, we look at light, we look at that energy from the outside. But if you actually sit still and you bring your awareness into the darkness that you see when you close your eyes and turn off all the lights, if you sit still long enough and go deep enough, you will discover light there and you are that light. Hmm. So now we've gone from seeing light to being light. And that's the light all the talk masters talked about. You know, when Buddha talks about enlightenment, enlightenment, right. lit up from within, or when your eye is single, your body will be filled with light, right? They're talking about life and they didn't say, I have it. You guys are screwed. Right. They all said, <laughs> they all said, if you sit still like I do, if you give that time, and you make that important in your life, you will experience what I experienced because they mm. were talking about human nature and they were fully present in their nature. That's why they were such good teachers of human nature and why they could heal and why so much wisdom came out of them mm. and why they gave such good advice and why people still revere whatever's left of that 2,000, 3,000, 5,000 years later. Right. That's number two, life energy. And you can actually see it, you can hear it, you can feel it, and you can taste it. Mm, interesting. So that's number two. Number three is inspiration or inspired creativity. That's the shine of the solar energy that is your life and that is your master into the world. And that's where all the positive mind stuff comes from. This is the creative part of mind where all the inventions come from. And they're always about making life better for people. So it's very positive stuff. Then there's the body, food and fitness, water, air, sleep rest, healing, digestion, and detox. I think that covers most of it. And that's where we spend most of our, our focus when we focus on health. Right, right. And the last one is uh, survival smarts, and that's the protective part of mind. That's for, for protection and procreation. That's all stuff inside of us. And that one has to do with, number one, you want to be calm under fire so you can deal the emergencies that arise. And it maybe helps to have skills for these crises that you can anticipate because of where you live and what you know about the place where you live. So earthquakes and volcanoes and tidal waves and right. you know, disaster preparedness to the extent that is possible. Right. You can't prepare for everything, but you can prepare for the main things. There's a saying, you know, when the tidal wave hit in Japan, there was a sign on a rock that said, do not build below this line. Because they knew about they knew about earthquakes and tidal waves because Japan gets lots of them, right? Sure, sure. But they didn't. <laughs> it was there, but they built the line. No one paid right? attention. And that's, yeah, and that. But they could have, right? That would have been disaster preparedness, mm. right? Mm. So then, after that, is social group, and social group. We know that other people affect our health. When we were kids on the soccer field, when we didn't like the kids, the other kids we were playing against. We used to yell at them, you make me sick. So even as kids, we knew that people affect our health. Mm. And then there's natural environment. What you do to the environment, you do to yourself. I saw a guy who carved in a log on a beach up here in BC, where I live. They had carved into a log in letters, one inch deep, one inch uh, wide, and about a foot high. This is a little bit crude. If you shit in your nest, you will nest in your shit. That covers every environmental issue. <laughs> right? Yeah. You Sounds know, so right. what you do to the environment. And the thing is that who you, what is your state of being determines how you treat other people and treat the environment. So with, if you're in peace, you see a very different world and create a very different world than if you're in anger or you're in fear. And automatically, whatever it is that is your state of being or your state of emotion comes to expression in how you feel, how you think, how you talk what you do, and what the outcome is of that, right? Gotcha. So what we've done to the environment is starting to bite us in the butt pretty extensively. So the next big thing is not COVID after COVID, it's climate change. Sure. You know, the climate change, you know, the short answer is, and COVID kind of set us up for that. You know, there are people who want to calcium carbonate all over the atmosphere Bill to Gates. cut out sunlight. 
right? Yeah, Bill Gates is playing yeah. that. But you know what? Researching it. Yeah, it's another. Anyway, let me not go there. But yeah. here's the thing. What we learned from COVID is that if we do less, the air clears, the porpoises, the dolphins come back into the canals in, in Venice. The water is cleaner. The air is cleaner. The flowers have more color. Yeah, you know, so, it's amazing so, how fast so those how things to actually fix the happen. environment. Yeah. The slogan shouldn't be, let's spray calcium carbonate in the atmosphere. The slogan should be, do less, right? Yeah. Because, yeah. And because what happened? We locked down. Nobody did anything. Oh, there's a lot of improvements happened because we weren't do, doing it. In, in a very short period of time. In a very short time. Yeah. It, no it's doubt. remarkable. So anytime somebody says, oh, let's do this and that and that, and there's always going to be big money-making schemes for what we should do to the environment. Just remember, to fix the environment, do less. <laughs> right? Love it. Love it. Yeah. So, All right. Let's let's change so that's gears that, for a and moment. And then the here. last, yeah, the last. Oh, there's one is, more. <laughs> is yeah, this that's number eight. Number eight is how many infinite. <laughs> that's it. Infinite awareness. That's the big picture. The fact that here I am living in a in a terminal condition called the human body. No matter how healthy I am, terminal condition in an infinite universe, and to be okay with all of that. The goal is to be fully present in all of my being and my surroundings, not lost in thoughts in my head, and be able to live into, live into the environment that I live in. And the life energy is, a, is my definition of unconditional love, because that energy, life, loves the body unconditionally, 24-7, 365, never asks for a raise, never goes on strike, always just does, 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 does no matter what I come up with in my head. So the idea is that if we want to have this heaven on earth kind of planet, if we're fully present in our being and our environment, we will have that planet. Eight billion people can experience that. It's all built into us. We are wired for it, but we have to look into the wiring instead of looking away from it. And for 200,000 years, we've been looking away from it and wondering why it's not working and sure. seeing problems when the solution to the problems was sucking Always back internal. and being yeah. present into the space that our body occupies. Right. So right. that's my goal for the next however many years I have. Everybody, 8 billion people could live their lives lit up from within. If they go in instead of going away from it, they will feel so cared for if they do that, that they won't steal each other's stuff. When we stop stealing each other's stuff, we can live in harmony. When we live in harmony, we can make sure that everybody's basic needs are met on a long-term sustainable basis. And it will not have, we will not fix the problems until we find our wholeness that is waiting to be discovered within ourselves. Mm. Well said, my friend. That's a mouthful. I mean, Short we have rant. traversed the entire universe from uh, healthy fats all the way to uh, yeah. infinite intelligence. <laughs> yeah, why not? Why think small? You know, thinking big doesn't, doesn't, is no harder than thinking small. I agree. I agree. Let me wrap it up with yeah. one last question that you know points it more uh, back uh, externally, and yeah. that is: you've written amazing books, and you have a number of books, and you're not done creating any content. You're working on new stuff as you're expressing mm -hmm. right now. Tell me, what have your books done for you? How have they helped you to expand your awareness? How mm -hmm. have they helped you to grow your brand, get your message out? What has that been for? Udo for Udo's message. Oh, you know, you will love this answer this because you're in the biz, right? That's right. I was going to make oils with a guy and I wasn't thinking about books. I, we were going to do some writing, but I wasn't thinking about that. So, and what happened was that fell through. And so I, I sucked back to say, well, I guess I can't make oils right now. Oh, but it doesn't cost me anything because I was broke. I didn't have any money. I moved in with my mother, right? Wow. And I said, I, what I can do that is, doesn't depend on anybody else is I can write about what I've learned about fats and health because I learned so much that I never learned in my years of biochemistry that they didn't talk about processing. They never pointed to processing as the problem in the conditions that oils cause that are associated with oils or frying or whatever. They never talked about that. So I thought, man, there must be other people who can benefit from what I've learned in my search for getting healthy. So let me write a book. Let me write it down and create a book. That wasn't a goal for me. I, I want to be an author. It's like, no, right. it's writing is tedious. 
It's hard. But it's it's very good for clarifying my thinking because I would write things down and I look at it and I said, I don't even believe that. And then I was like, well, what do you actually really believe? <laughs> so I have to write it again. And I wrote the first book three times. First time mm. I got 60 pages into it and said, no, there's not something wrong here. Second time I got 30 pages into it and I looked at it and I said, I wouldn't write, I wouldn't buy this book. <laughs> that's a sign. <laughs> I wouldn't yeah, buy this book. Yeah, that's a good sign. And so I started over again. It all fell into place. And literally, there were 54 chapters. I think I wrote 51 or 52 of them. Literally, just started, went to bed, got up, started, wrote, 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 wrote. And in a matter of, it sort of got organized inside of my own head in a way that it just flowed out, flowed out on the third shot. And the book I wrote on the, what I call the book on total sexy health, the eight key parts designed by nature, that came about like that too. I'd been thinking about it and I started writing and it didn't flow. And, and then one day it just flowed. And I like getting to the point where I can just write it in that flow. And it's, a, it's cosmic almost, like it's mm -hmm. almost like channeled. You know, I'm not big on that stuff, but it, it just felt like it just felt like it was there. I don't remember organizing it. It literally organized itself because I think the mind is self-organizing. And so you spend enough time on a topic and it becomes self-organized and a flow. Mm. And then it came out. And then I had, had to add three chapters because I, they needed to go somewhere. And, they, I just and, stuck and what have they done it. for you? How, how have they helped? It, the? It did everything. Mm. It did everything. It gave me credibility, obviously. You know, you, to, to write a book like that is, is fairly technical. It's not quarter million really copies sold. Yeah. And uh, that was the expansion of the original book that's got 91 chapters. Mm. And that pretty much flowed as well. But, you know, it's one way I look at it is the book is like my calling card. You know, you get a little business card. This is my business card. Right. And authors have more credibility than just about anybody. Even though sometimes lousy, lousy books, you know, but the fact that it's yeah, written yeah. somehow makes it makes it more credible to people. It's true. And but the but the book's a good book. A lot of work went into it. So and people who've read it, they got good good information out of it. And the way I sold two hundred and fifty thousand copies, I did radio shows, and uh, I'd sell a few. One radio show, I think I sold something close to a thousand copies. Wow. And it that's, was a big radio show. That's and significant. I was blown, yeah, I was blown away. But usually I'd go and do talks and I'd sell two or three or five or six or 10. And I think the thing I would say to people is writing a book on something that you're competent in is a really good idea, hmm. partly to clarify your own thinking on your topic. Because when you start writing it down, you see what you know and you see what you notice what you don't. So it's right. a really good way to process your, your information and make it coherent. So it's good from a personal point of view for that. Makes me more fluent when I talk uh, because I've really gone through it with a fine tooth comb letter by letter. And the book can be sent and the book will find its own audience. I talked through the book. I talked to so many people that I never, ever had personal access to. Sure, no doubt. And, and the book went around and then the book found itself and somebody else has something to say about it. So then it takes on a life of its own. But it's also important to understand that when the book is published is when the work begins. I like because, to tell my clients that. That's right. Yeah, because, and a lot of original authors think the publisher is going to do everything. Nope. And that's not, it's even less that way now than it was when my first book came out in True. 1986. Yep. And, and yeah, because it's my work. It's my work. So I'm responsible for getting it out. And then the book wasn't a big money maker. I made more money on products sure. than on the book. But the book definitely gave me credibility. And the book was good enough so that I've met people who are now in, in FATS research who have told me at the conferences that I've gone to. They said they read my book, and that was the book that made them decide to dedicate their research life to fats. Wow. And that's pretty Very cool. Very cool. And I, I, didn't, yeah. I was not a fat chemist. This is like, you know, I was not a lipid chemist. Yeah. I was just a guy who liked biology. I love biology. I yeah. love the way things are made. You know, that's like love oh, it. nature. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's serious credibility. 
but write a good book, you know, write something, you know, and do it in a something you have passion for, because mm. you can't write a really good book without passion. And if you don't write a really good book, you're probably not going to be all that excited about telling people that you wrote it. Sure. Right? But the book, sure. so the contribution that you're making is really the most important thing. And the book is for that one vehicle, right? Wonderful. So, Udo, thank you. All right. Wise words. I appreciate the time you've given us today. Great stuff. I am, as soon as we're done, going to go and buy some of uh, the Udo oil. Let's tell people where should they best go to learn more about you, buy your books, get your oil. You know, where's the best place we can send them? Okay. Well, there's a bunch of places. Udo's Choice, U-D-O-S Choice.com is a website for the products and why we made them and how we made them and Okay. All our thinking behind that. I have another site that is theudo.com, T H E U D O, or udoerasmus.com. And we have educational materials and, yeah. and uh, some courses there. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. I have a YouTube channel. I've been at this for quite a while. So I'm not hard to find. Nice. And if you want the book, you can get it. Bookstores can bring it in. It's in books and print. And Amazon has it. And the oils and the enzymes and probiotics, they're in, uh, in the natural foods trade. Uh, but you can also get the, those on Amazon. And there are some of the internet distributors carry them. Excellent. Uh, not hard to find. Excellent. Yeah. So, Good. Well, yeah. thank you, my friend. I certainly enjoyed getting to know you. And uh, I love the, uh, the span of the things that we talked about. Yeah. And uh, I am absolutely going to try some of Udo's oil in my bulletproof coffee. I've been doing it every day for, I don't know, probably seven years now. I mean, it just, but yeah. I get the idea. And so, uh, so thank you for that. Yeah. And uh, thank you for being part of the podcast today. Yeah. And thank you for having me on. And I guess when you, when it's going up, you're going to let me know. Of course. So, absolutely. So we'll promote it. You're promoting us. We're promoting you. And I, it's one of the things I like about podcasts. A lot of mutual love there. Thank yeah. you. And you still get to speak your truth on podcasts, not so much on mainstream media. Very true. A lot, lot of things are so curated that it's hard to get new information, good Very information. Very true. Out. Not with podcasts, though. You can with podcasts. It's no, great. That's, yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Rob. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. Have a great day. And uh, I'm going to your website right now. Yeah. All right. <laughs> See you later.